citizen. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The legendary Detroit activist, philosopher Grace Lee Boggs died Monday at the age of 100. She was born in Rhode Island in 1915 to Chinese immigrant parents. She would go on to become deeply involved with the civil rights, black power, labor, environmental justice, feminist movements. Over the past decade, Grace Lee Boggs was a frequent guest on Democracy Now! Her profile grew in 2013 with the release of the Peabody Award-winning documentary American Revolutionary, The Evolution of Grace Lee Boggs. The film captures Grace's remarkable life story, from collaborating with CLR James to organizing with Malcolm X to starting Detroit Summer. I feel so sorry for people who are not living in Detroit. People are always striving for size, to be a giant. And this is a symbol of how giants fall. Keep recognizing that reality is changing and that your ideas have to change. Don't get stuck in old ideas. Race has made more contributions to the black struggle than most black people have. How did you become a philosopher? I'll just go back uh, 70 years. I'm not sure why I am who I am. I think it does have something to do with the fact that I was born female and born Chinese. Folks didn't really think about Grace as a Chinese American. She was Grace. You know, she was just one of us. I think the light bulb goes on very often in conversations that people have, and we, we don't pay attention to it. Talk is cheap. I, can't, I find it very, very difficult to take. I want to tell you honestly, their talk was not cheap. Oh, God, yes, yeah, she made all kinds of people cry. <laughs> Myself included. Grace, how would you describe where we stand now? One of the difficulties when you're coming out of oppression is that you get a, a concept of the Messiah. You have to get to that point that we are the leaders we've been looking for. We are the children of Martin and Malcolm. I don't know what the next American Revolution is going to be like, but you might be able to imagine it if your imagination were rich enough. The film American Revolutionary features archival audio and video footage of Grace Lee Boggs dating back to the 1960s. Back in 1963, Grace was still speaking as an outsider. I want to make very clear that I, I do not claim in any sense of the word to be a Negro. I have not lived all my life as a Negro, and I don't think anyone who hasn't really can speak for the Negro. But once she becomes a black power activist, she starts using the word we. In the black movement, when we were demanding first-class citizenship, we were saying we were be being denied that. We were very ethical, but we wanted more than that. Right. We wanted to become part of the people who took responsibility for the country. So by 1966, 67, she's well known, particularly in Detroit circles, but also nationally, as a black power figure. And I became so active in the black power movement that FBI records at that time say that I was probably Afro-Chinese. <laughs> Nobody ever really thought, I don't know how to say this, but folks didn't really think about Grace as a Chinese American. She was Grace, you know, she was just one of us. Along with her husband, the auto worker and author Jimmy Boggs, who was just seen in that clip, Grace Lee Boggs started a number of political groups in Detroit and published widely from books to political pamphlets. In 1974, they co wrote Revolution and Evolution in the 20th Century. In 2011, at the age of 96, the University of California Press published Grace's final book, The Next American Revolution. Sustainable Activism for the 21st Century. Revolution was a topic Grace Lee Boggs talks extensively about in American Revolutionary. During Grace's lifetime, hundreds of revolutions have taken place around the world. People thought of revolution chiefly in terms of taking state power. But we've had revolutions, and we've seen how the states which they have created have turned out to be like replicas of the states which they oppose. You have to bring those two words together and recognize that we are responsible 
for the evolution of the human species. It's a question of two-sided transformation and not just the oppressed versus the oppressor. We had to change ourselves in order to change the world. In the 1990s, Grace Lee Boggs turned her home into the Boggs Center to nurture community leadership. In 2013, she helped start the James and Grace Lee Boggs School, a charter elementary school. She continued talking and writing about revolution well into her 90s, as her prominence grew in Detroit and beyond. When we think about Grace in the 20th century, she is very much an outsider. In the 21st century, she represents the uniting of people from different races and different backgrounds in a way that is now defining America. Let me make a challenge to you, okay? With people of color becoming the new American majority in many parts of the country, how are we going to create a new vision for this country? <laughs> a vision of a new kind of human being, which is what is demanded at this moment. So that's your challenge. And so the Black Power Movement came Even out. in her 90s, Grace still travels the country talking about revolution. But she always brings the conversation back to Detroit. I can't begin to tell you the number of young people who come to Detroit. And they come in order to be part of this new world that is being created. An excerpt from American Revolutionary, The Evolution of Grace Lee Boggs. The film is screening free online on POV. Grace Lee Boggs died Monday at her home, surrounded by her caretakers and friends. She was 100 years old. When we come back, we'll be joined by Alice Jennings, close friend of Grace Lee Boggs and trustee of her estate. Stay with us.